What is Tav? Who is Tav? Who was Tav? Why is Tav? I can tell you what Tav is. Nothing. Because they are a blank canvas for the player to impress upon. She is a blank slate upon which my teachings may be written, as you well know. They have no origin or a unique connecting points to the story. Who is Tav? In the current state of the game, no one. They aren't anyone outside of the personality you deemed to give them, which is constrained by the options Larian allows you to pick in dialogue, which in the current state of the game are very limited. Who was Tav? No one, because they didn't exist in the Forgotten Realms prior to you making them. They had no life outside of the Mind Flayer pod. Last but not least, why is Tav, or rather, why is Tav the main character of Baldur's Gate 3? No other reason than the fact that you made them. The sad truth is this. The origin characters all have stronger claims on being both the party leader and main character. This is a problem the custom character of Divinity Original Sin 2 and Baldur's Gate 3 have. A problem no other CRPG protagonist before them had. My goal of this video is to explain where I believe Larian is going wrong with the custom character, discuss how other RPGs handled this better, and get potential ideas on how they could fix this problem, because criticism without critique isn't particularly helpful. Welcome to the dream, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Damashi, and we are back for some more RPG musings. If you haven't already done so, please like the video and subscribe to the channel because it really helps me out a lot. I have a lot of RPG related content, especially a lot of Baldur's Gate 3 related content coming. Be sure to comment down below on your thoughts on this topic because I'd love to read them and also join the discussion on the Baldur's Gate 3 Reddit where this will also be posted. I have to preface this musings episode by saying three things. First, Divinity Original Sin 2 is not only my favorite RPG of all time, it is my favorite game in general. Very minor problem I have with the game, there are 10 plus major things that I love. Unfortunately, the way custom characters are handled in Larian games, DOS 2 onwards, isn't a minor complaint, it's a major one. The second thing is that I can only comment on what is currently in BG3's early access, which is only Act 1 of the game, and that act isn't even finished yet, and the entirety of Divinity Original Sin 2. So not only can they later remedy a lot of the problems I have with the custom character, they have plenty of time to do so. In fact, Swenna's most recent interview with Destructoid said they are being very conservative about what gets shown in early access. And to quote Swen directly, There's also parts we haven't seen yet. Significant changes in the main storyline that weren't ready or included yet, even in the first act area. I suspect many of these things have to do with the custom character, which I speculated on in my reaction to that interview. The third thing is that Adam Smith has assured players back in Larian's BG3 AMA that the custom characters will be better and have the same narrative weight as origin characters. This is less a doom and gloom video and more of a hopeful one, as well as a plea to Adam Smith and Larian to keep their promise and to drum up more discussion around this topic. He basically points to the stands and declared her home run and I hope more than anything that he hits it and that Larian doesn't strike out a second time. Speaking of the AMA, let's take a look at what the kind folks over at Larian had to say about the custom characters before early access. For the sake of time, and to spare my vocal cords, I will not be reading out Larian's statements aloud. I will simply display them on screen and respond. Reading their statements out loud is what made my Swen interview reaction 25 minutes long, which wasn't intentional. That not currently is important because it means that they aren't saying no to the idea. Giving the player the option to create a character afflicted with lycanthropy or vampirism would be very interesting and lead to unique dynamics in the party, especially in romance scenes, where you'd have to resist giving into your urges and instincts. I made it no small secret that I love werewolves in my feedback to Larian in the past, and I'd be furious if I had to play an origin character to be one. Maybe if you pick a vampire spawn custom character, you have the option to select if your master is still alive or not. If you pick he is alive, 
you could either have a default master made by Larian, or have the player create one, and then later get to roleplay those interactions. If you select your master as dead, this could lead to unique interactions with Starion and perhaps Kazador. Maybe he's jealous of how free you are. Maybe in one of the dream sequences, you roleplay how your master died. If you're a warlock, you can select that the vampirism lycanthropy was a gift from your patron. I agree with some of what Adam has said here. The level of reactivity that the game has is really, really impressive. And again, this is coming from someone that loves DOS 2, a game that also has incredible reactivity. BG3s is even another step above that, maybe even several. However, I fundamentally disagree with the statement that they are more unique just because I created them. The writers have to intentionally bake substance into the custom character, or they will be inferior to origin characters by default. It's unavoidable. If I play a human undead mystic scholar in DOS 2, I will have a weaker narrative experience than if I played Fane. Fane will have the same dialogue options as my custom character, plus extra ones you can only get as Fane, plus narrative beats that are tailored to the fact that I am playing Fane. In fact, there is a narrative beat near the very end of DOS 2 that falls completely flat if you A. aren't playing Fane, or B. never met him. And I can already see the same problem happening again in BG3. If I make a Baldarian rogue, or a Clerk of Shar in the current state of the game, they will be less interesting than just playing a Starion or Shadowheart. Shadowheart literally dreams about the same exact things as you do. And a Starion has unique interactions with Kazador Zar, on top of having unique rules and abilities centered around being him. Because he's a vampire spawn, Wool has a unique patron that heavily factors into his story. All the warlocks don't have that, and my patron has not factored into the story at all. Gale is a level 20 wizard that was brought down to level 1, and has a unique relationship with Mistra and the Netheril. The odd one out so far is Lizelle, who is effectively a nobody among the Githyanki, but she hails from a different crush from the custom character, and she dreams of So far, there is nothing in the game that I have seen that makes a custom character as good as playing an Origin. The only thing that comes close is playing a full-blooded, lost-sworn drow because they have a unique, easily missable resting sequence you only get while you're alone. We all have a tadpole embedded in our head. We all get powers from using the tadpole. Everything you have, the origin characters also have, and then some. Just like in Divinity Original Sin 2, everyone was a sorcerer, everyone was godawoken, but the origin characters had much more going for them on top of being more interesting and were significantly more important and involved in the overarching narrative than you are if you played a custom character. In summation, the story isn't about you, it's about them. I love everyone over at Larian Studios. They are the nicest, sweetest bunch I have ever had the pleasure of talking to. Which is why it pains me to say in the current build of the game, yes, I do feel shortchanged compared to the origin characters. For all the reasons I have previously mentioned, but I want to draw attention to one thing Adam said specifically here. You'll discover quest lines and stories that relate directly to the character you're role-playing, and the things you've done. I agree with the things we've done part of the statement, but there's nothing so far that I have seen that the origin characters couldn't have gotten as well. The closest thing to this would have been the dream figure, but we dreamed the same thing as Shadowheart, right down to the figure promising the same things. Effectively, the dream figure is BG3's equivalent to the Seven. Everyone in the party meets them, and has slightly different dialogue with them, but the core of what you are told is the same. Gale even mentions the line, You are not ready. I will return when you are. Because the lines told to him are again the same as ours. Often, the origin characters of DOS 2 had more unique interactions with their member of the Seven, and sometimes even got more revelations about what's going on, in particular, Fane gets significantly more interesting interactions and lore than a custom undead, and more insight into Amadia's desires and personality. A Starion is like Losa. They see someone else during these moments. A Starion seeing Kazador, and Losa seeing... Spoiler character, go play DOS 2, it's really goddamn good. And this is why I don't like how Larian has handled the origin system. The way they have done it so far is if you pick an origin character, your personal narrative experience is outright better. You have unique plot beats and importance in the main narrative and the lore of the setting. It feels as if this story couldn't have happened without you, but you also miss out on having the origin character be in your party. 
learning about them, developing relationships with them, etc. I don't want to play Gale. I want to romance him. I don't want to play Shadowheart. I want her as a friend. I don't want to play Lizelle. I want to earn her respect as a fellow warrior and tactician. The custom character suffers narratively, but you can take the origin characters with you, unless you're playing multiplayer, because the more custom characters there are, the less of the origin characters you're getting, and the less about the overarching narrative you know, because of how important they are to it. At this point, picking origin characters is the only choice if you want the best narrative experience possible, which is obviously a huge problem. Again, the story is about them, not you currently. Remember how I said previously, pretty much everyone in BG3 is the same as the custom character, except the origin characters have more? Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 weren't like that. My gripes with BG2 aside, go watch my BG2 musings video for my thoughts on that game. Your character in BG1 and 2 was Gorion Thward. There were multiple ball spawns throughout the games. Some of them, Imowen, Sarabak, or even party members, but only one party member was Gorion's ward, and that was you. From the get-go, from the prologue, before we even hit Act 1 of BG1 proper, our character was unique. We had unique relationships and people knew who we were. We had unique story and plot beats that only we could have gotten. The custom character of BG3 and DOS2 don't have that. Within the context of BG3's Act 1, I have not seen anything like Gorion's ward within our custom character, and I should have. There is only one real instance in BG3 where you can say something about your character so far that is actually meaningful. It's in a conversation with a Starion. When he asks you about your dream, you can say that the figure you met in your dream is familiar. This is the closest the game gives you to a tethering point to the setting and story. You only get this scene if you indulge in tadpole usage and only if you talk to a Starion first. Meaning it's not only completely optional, it's easily missable. Unfortunately, pretty much every time the game could give you the opportunity to either let the player learn about the custom character, or allow the player to make a backstory for the custom character for the world to react to, all you get are generic lines like, tell them your story. Now, I'm going to talk about how other games in the genre outside of BG1 and 2 gave importance and narrative weight to the main character, so that they had as much weight, if not more, than the other members of the party. I will also talk about the narrative importance those companions had compared to your own character on occasion. I can tell you who the leads of KOTOR 1 and 2 are. Excusing Trask's horrible exposition in KOTOR 1, I'm Trask Olgo. We learn a lot about our character within that Act 1, even if a lot of those things turn out to be fabrications. It's complicated, go play KOTOR 1, it's really good. And I don't really want to spoil it here. At the start of Act 1, about the middle, and about the end of Act 1, there's something very clearly unique about your character, and this on top of the exposition you got at the start really helped your character stand out among your colorful party members and helps with role-playing. All the companions have so much personality, and all could have feasibly been the main character with a bit of tweaking, with how much their stories tie into the background lore or the main plot of the game, with the exception of Zalbar and Mission, and maybe HK-47, but even he has ample reason to go after the big bad. Again, I'm dancing around spoilers here, because you really should play KOTOR 1 and 2. Speaking of KOTOR 2, within KOTOR 2's prologue, before even hitting Act 1, the main character is immediately interesting. Within that prologue, we learned that our character was once a Jedi, that they left the Order, that they were a general in the Mandalorian Wars, that they lost their connection to the Force, and are regaining it as we play, and we even get to roleplay how they feel about all of these things. The companions often ask you about your past, your thoughts and feelings on the events of the Mandalorian Wars, your thoughts on the Force and the Jedi and Sith religions, and as a result, the player is constantly incentivized to play into the role. I need to stress again, we learn and experience these things in the prologue and act one of the story. And there is still so much to learn about your character in acts two and three. Speaking of the KOTOR 2 companions, pretty much all of the companions in that game are winners. Everyone has so much importance to the plot and background lore of the game. Much like the origin characters of DOS 2 and BG3, 
I literally can't imagine the story if any one of them was ejected from the narrative entirely. They are all incredibly well written and detailed. Pretty much any of them could have been the main character too with some tweaking. Except Hanhar and Mira. But even they have more going for them than DOS 2 and BG3's custom character. In Baldur's Gate 3, I literally can't tell you what makes my character unique or interesting compared to the companions. Not within just the prologue, but in all of Act 1. Is it the dream character? Well, no, for all the reasons I mentioned in the AMA section. I can tell you about the leads of Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2, Planescape Torment, Dragon Age Origins, and even DOS 1. Yeah, I bet none of you were expecting me to sing DOS 1's praises on the story axis. DOS 1 doesn't have particularly great storytelling or role-playing. Everyone has said it, I don't need to get into it in this video. But the main protagonist is one thing DOS 1 does better than DOS 2 and BG3. In DOS 1, we start out as Source Hunters. Our preset gives us a little information on what led to us joining the Order. As we play, we recruit another Source Hunter, a country bumpkin named Medora, who's completely out of her mind and paranoid about everything being Source. You think that would diminish how unique our characters are, right? Well, you'd be wrong. Much like in Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, as we play, we learn something is off about our character. Or rather, in DOS 1's case, characters. By the time we meet Brachus Rex, if you haven't already figured out something is up with your characters, he makes it very clear. These leads are immensely important to the world, setting, and the characters that exist within it, and the plot as a whole. These stories could not have been told with these characters removed. Not only could the stories of DOS 2 and BG3, in its current state, be told without the custom character, the stories are actually improved by their absence. In Dragon Age Origins, as its name suggests, you select your origin story, and then you play through it. There are six origin stories, and which one you can pick is limited by race, class, or both. For example, dwarves in the Dragon Age setting can't be mages, and if you pick a mage, you are locked into the mage origin. Each takes about an hour to complete, and ends with you being recruited to become a new Grey Warden. This is effectively the prologue. You learn a lot about your character's life and the society they live in. We live in a society. You also get to see the relationships your character has already formed, and roleplay those interactions as well as meet several of the characters you'll be interacting with later in the game. The characters you meet react and respond in a believable way consistently throughout the entire game. In fact, I'd say in its current state, BG3 is closest to Dragon Age Origins, which was also created as a spiritual successor to Baldur's Gate. The origin stories you did not play die. They still existed and affected the world in a default way, but you had no control over it. And the reason you survive where they didn't is that the origin you picked is the one that gets visited by Duncan. If Alistair is a Grey Warden and blood relative of the King, doesn't that make him more qualified to be the main character? Just like you were complaining about, the custom character in BG3 not having enough to stand out? No. Not even factoring in the fact that Alistair hates leading and the Darkspawn Chronicles DLC where Alistair is forced to step up as leader without your character, resulting in Ferelden losing badly. The Warden's origin story perfectly sets them up to be the main character. By the time the prologue has ended, not even Act 1, by the prologue, your origin story has solidified you as the character that should be leading this party. There is the Tyranny Method, which I really like. First, you select your character's history, which is their class, and this describes how your character joined Kairos' army. Each of the histories tying back into one of the major characters you will be interacting with throughout the entire game. Then the game gives you an optional questionnaire that tells both you and the game what you did as a member of Kairos' military before the game's main story begins proper. And then the game remembers and reacts to all the things you did if you chose to answer the questionnaire. This is essentially an additional layer on top of what Kotor 2 did, which is fitting since Obsidian made both games, and is effectively the prologue. Remember how the KOTOR leads had elaborate backstories given to them? And the game said, control them. Well, Tyranny lets you choose from several elaborate backstories attached to their class, 
and then has the world react to it before you start walking around. Now, with all this context gained for why so many feel custom characters feel lacking, and what other CRPGs did to make their leads work, which of these methods, if any, would make the most sense for Baldur's Gate 3? Baldur's Gate 3 is closest in structure to Dragon Age Origins, so you'd think its method would make the most sense. But BG3 has something Dragon Age did not. Multiplayer. So whatever makes the custom character unique also needs to make sense for multiplayer, so that everyone feels special, and the story is about them as well. In fact, with the exception of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, and Larian's own games, none of these games had full multiplayer co-op through the story, and in the case of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, the game basically treated everyone as if they were Gorion's ward. In my opinion, what would make the most sense is a combination of the KOTOR 2 and Dragon Age Origins methods. Your backstory is a combination of your race and class. If your friends pick the exact same combination as you, the game won't begin, and this should be the first thing the game tells you in multiplayer, so you can coordinate. If no one plays a specific class slash race combo, these stories still happened and affect the world in some capacity, but in a default way you had no control over, just like in Origins. Once you hit Act 1 proper, you should constantly be having dreams that don't have to do with the tadpole, that aren't missable, like in Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. These non-tadpole related dreams should allow the player to play out various moments, both major and minor, in their custom character's past, like the flashback scenes in Telltale's Walking Dead Season 3. Or, for a more palatable comparison for those who hated that season, myself included, like the scene where you were exiled from the Jedi Order in KOTOR 2, effectively being the origins in Dragon Age Origins split up into dreams over the course of Act 1, instead of played all at once as the prologue. These scenes culminating in a final dream that shows what caused you to be captured by Mind Flayers. The dreams you get would be based on your character's race and class. It's important that these scenes are as interesting and gripping as the origin characters, and are thematically consistent with the main themes of the game, and the Baldur's Gate series as a whole. The origin characters and NPCs should ask about the player's life and experiences, and encourage us to play into the role. And we should have meaningful and interesting things to say in response. Not generic, tell them your storylines, or basic childhood memory spent in the sun type lines from DOS 2. Again, the custom character needs to be as gripping and interesting as the origin stories. I should feel like this is my story, or at the very least, like it's an ensemble cast a la Final Fantasy VI, where everyone is pretty much the main character with the exception of the extra characters, Gao, Mog, Umaro, and Gogo. We should also have the option to lie about our past just like Astarian and Will do. The option, or rather options, to choose not to answer at first like Gale, for various reasons, like it's not the time or you don't like talking about it because the memories are painful. Lastly, like Shadowheart, you should have the option to say you don't remember, or the details are fuzzy or hazy. If you pick these types of options, it should come back up later in the story, and the origin characters should respond appropriately. Sometimes it's better to hear the truth from yourself rather than learn about it from external means. Maybe a starring is the only one to try and use the tadpole to try and see what really happened if you lie. And if he sees you're lying, he tries to use it as leverage. A lot of you are probably thinking, this would be a lot of work to implement, and you would be correct. But things like this need to be done to make custom characters feel meaningful. This was actually the simplest solution I could come up with, which would still lead to interesting custom characters, but could still be implemented within the time frame BG3 is expected to come out. Back during Divinity Original Sin 2's development, part of why they had so much trouble making the origin characters work is that they kept trying to find shortcuts and workarounds to make things easier. About how to do this, uh, we've tried and we tried and tried and uh, we couldn't we couldn't understand why we were having such a hard time. But it uh, it took a very long time because it turns out that uh, to be able to make it work like it worked in Original Sin 2, you need to do a lot of things. And it was so many things that we kept on looking for 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 simpler solutions until we actually accepted the fact that there is no simple solution. We're going to have to do it the hard way. Sometimes there is no shortcut for quality 
you just have to put in the work, time, and money to do it the long and hard way. That's all I've got for you today. Please remember to give your thoughts on what custom characters need to be better in the comments section or over on Reddit. Also, please share the video around because the more people that see it and the more people discussing this topic, the more likely this will be addressed in the future.